I was going to start by saying I find it very difficult when I'm given 15 minutes to talk to someone whose story could fill an encyclopedia. Well, thank you. Well, we'll, see, we'll just hit the high point. Yeah. Well, it's been a very interesting ride for you. I mean, you, you're like night and day in what you do with the vandals and then being a legal expert as well. Well, you know, if we think if you're punk rock, you probably should have a day job because it's just punk rock. It's not, you know, not supposed to be a rock star uh, lifestyle. So most of us have day jobs except for our drummer. And maybe our guitar player, he doesn't really have one either. <laughs> but yeah, I went to law school at some point And then, uh, yeah, now I just kind of give legal advice on the radio and online. I, and uh, But I don't really uh, practice law in a traditional sense. Becoming a lawyer when you're in a punk rock band or any band at all is actually really handy. Have you found that that's been the best thing you could have done for your career? No, I think it's it's something that helps sometimes, but it also hurts. Like you spend three years in law school and then you try to write the same kind of songs you write before that, and then you're not going to be able to because they fill your brain with too much crap. And it does affect that, but, you know, so does old age. So, you know, who knows what it is. Yeah. You actually started in the Vandals back in 1980 as the drummer. Yes. I was drummer on the first two records. On the third record, I actually played the drums, but it says I played the bass because I wasn't a very good bass player, and the drummer wasn't. A, I was a better drummer than the drummer we had, and but we found a better bass player to, to play the tracks. And then I transitioned over to, to play bass after that because I didn't like carrying around all those drums. And then eventually we got Josh Freeze, and now we're more known for having Josh Freeze in our band than probably anything else. Yeah, because he plays with Devo, and he has played with Nine Inch Nails and The Perfect Circle, and... He also plays with Weezer and people like that. Yeah. It must be hard to, like at the moment, it does say that you pick shows that are fun to do, but it must also have to fit in with his schedule and all the other bands he works with. Yeah. Well, we used to do it that way, and now we just book shows. And if he can come, he comes. Like last weekend, we played uh, a show in the Midwest here in uh, Iowa, and he came to that. But then in Australia, he can't come, so we use the Alkaline Trio drummer uh, Derek Grant. And he's, he's the guy that usually goes to Australia with. Wow, that's pretty good. But then, well, can I ask then, like, with your legal leanings and your punk rock, where did the influence come from? Was your father or mother a musician or a lawyer? Let's see. No, no lawyers and no musicians. <laughs> or neither. <laughs> so you were real punk rock and you went on your own path? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just. I listened to the Ramones, and then I thought, well, I, I, I can do that. And then I taught myself to play the drums and and then started a band, you know. I, I was in, like, two or three bands that didn't do much until uh, I got in the Vandals, and then I've stayed in that band, you know, ever since. But I also play in a Morrissey uh, tribute band. All right. So you, you still love playing the music? Yeah, I like, I like playing music. It's fun. Yeah. And you are coming to Australia for Soundwave, and I'm going to assume it's not the first time. Well, actually, I did read you have done Soundwave before. Yeah, it was our second Soundwave. Had you been to Australia before that? Yeah, before that, we'd been uh, probably five or six times, or maybe ten, maybe as many as ten, maybe eight times probably. We've done, we've done like, small clubs. Uh, we did a tour with Pennywise in Sun 41. We did warp tours. Uh, whatever we could do. Oh, yeah. Is there something in Australia that you look forward to every time you come back here? I think just the culture in general. You know, we just identify with the Australians. They like our nonsense kind of music. They get us. Always got smiles on their faces. And, you know, we live near the beach here. And it seems like, you know, the water's never far away. Any city that you're playing in Australia and, you know, for a lot of people, it's, a, it's in America, it's a trip of a lifetime to go to Australia. So that's what people consider it. Trip of a lifetime. Once in your life, you, you're going to go to Australia and you're going to have this big trip and you're going to go to the Sydney Opera House. And we go there so much, you know, sometimes we take it for granted, but uh, we really like it. Oh, cool. Never been to that Sydney Opera House, though. <laughs> well, you'll have to put it on your bucket list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to ask, too, you have had 11 studio albums out, but is it 2004 since your last release? Yeah. Do they still make records? I don't know. Yeah, we are just, you know, been lazy about it, and we've been in the studio recording some stuff, and we just haven't figured out a good way to release the stuff that we've recorded, and 
and to finish the stuff that we still need to record. But we did record one song for the uh, Soundwave compilation, and it's a song called I'm an Individual, originally recorded by a football player named Jacko from Australia. Yeah. I actually, I'm from the same town as he's from. So you, do you know that song? I know the song, yeah. I've, I've met him a couple of times in the past. Well, well, if you see him around the neighborhood, you can tell him, you challenge him, uh, and we, we, recorded the, we recorded the song uh, and perfected it. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing your version of it. It'll be on the Soundwave compilation that comes out in a couple of weeks. Awesome. And well, you do, you have your website down at the moment, vandals.com. You're building a new website, so is that going to be like with the release of a new album that that comes up? You know, I think it just comes down because, like, what's the purpose? Uh, most people go to our Facebook page, and, you know, someone's redesigning it, but we don't call and yell at them and say, hey, where is it? So, you know, that, that takes forever. Yeah. And you do have links on vandals.com for Facebook, Twitter, Bandcamp, merchandise, and Kung Fu Records, which is your own record label. Yeah. Yeah. And then they handle all the uh, merchandise for us. So if you need to see the Vandals uh, tour schedule, you go to the Facebook page. If you want to buy stuff, you go to Bandcamp and... Uh, Kung Fu Records site has, you know, stuff on it too, but the Vandals page itself, we just kind of uh, waiting to see what happens whenever this guy's done doing whatever he's going to do. But it's not going to be anything, you know, spectacular because all the action is over on Facebook. Yeah. And you have been doing this for over 30 years yourself and you have been involved with a lot of bands and that. Have you got a special memory that you treasure, like one moment that really stands out? Um, I would say playing in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and Kuwait during uh, the Iraq War for the soldiers. That was uh, um, the most fun I think I've ever had and the most meaningful. You know, then you realize it puts all your music in perspective when the people that are in your mosh pit, good chance they might die within 24 hours, you know. Yeah, and there were Australians over there too. Uh, that we played for, and it was it was great to just go over there, and it didn't have anything to do with the war itself. It was just trying to entertain the troops who were away from their families over Christmas and New Year, and that was in 2003 and 2004. Right, yeah. And you actually, that caused a bit of controversy with the tour that you had in Europe, but you still feel it was worth it, obviously. We went to Iraq and Kuwait, and then we went straight there. After that, a couple of weeks later, we went and did a tour of, Europe, and they boycotted us all over the place, everywhere except for Belgium. Now, there was protests, there was demonstrations, there were flyers passed out with pictures of us and dead babies, uh, stuff like that. And then our career in Europe was, was pretty much over, overnight. And then a couple months after that, we went back to Afghanistan and did the same thing over there. So, like, that's how much we cared about that. Yeah, that's, it sounds actually very childish, the reaction the Europeans had. Yeah, it all started in uh, Austria at a club called the Arena Club. And that was a club that used to be a squat. And we played there when it was a squat. Played there for years. And they knew us. You know, they were just being, you know, they were just trying to talk about themselves. Like, look at us. We're going to protest this band because uh, then everyone will think we're uh, great humanitarians. And they didn't care what it did to us. And they didn't care about anything but themselves. So it was a very selfish thing for them to do. But it was very effective. And uh, we haven't been back to Europe since. Uh, we've only been able to play like a festival in Belgium and uh, one festival in England since. Oh, well, that's their loss, really. You know what? Time for us to go to Australia. Definitely. And I think I just got buzzed because I'm running out of time. I'll tell people to go to vandals.com because you do have links to all your social media there. And you are facebook.com forward slash the vandals. And you're coming to Soundwave 2015. And people can find out more about that at soundwavefestival.com. And you are on my favourite day with Slipknot headlining. And I could talk to you for another half an hour or more, but I'm not allowed to. So thank you very much for your time. All right. I appreciate it, Kat. Hopefully I'll be able to catch up with you at Soundwave and and get a few more questions answered because you've done so much. Yeah. Come and say hi. We'll be lurking around uh, Fallout Boys craft service table where we uh, steal all of the food and drinks. Awesome. (laughs) Thanks a lot. Have a good day.